morning YouTube. All right, we are standing firm in our Appalachian roots. Today we are doing an old school recipe. We're making okra and tomatoes. Yep, it's delicious. I don't care how you had okra, if you haven't had it this way, you haven't really had okra. All right, let's cook y'all. We got a family to feed. All right, I have a big admission to make. And mom, let me tell you right now, I love you, but I gotta speak some truth into the world. When we were little, my mother would make boiled okra, which is the worst thing that can happen to a child. Let me tell you something. There is nothing worse on the planet. So okra has a mucilaginous quality, right? It can get a little bit slimy. It's depending on how you cook it, right? Um, and a lot of times when we love okra, we love it fried or we love it in gumbo or something else, you know, something that, that mitigates that, that, uh, that mucilage thing. <laughs> in, in gumbo, it actually thickens the stew. So that's perfect. Deep fried, you don't find it at all. You just get the delicious popcorn quality. You boil it though. Have you ever seen a cow sneeze? That's, ugh, that's what I'm talking about. I think it's child abuse. <laughs> Don't do it. My siblings and I almost never got over it. And it took me almost 40 years to try okra another way. Now, once I finally did get over myself and try it, I discovered I loved it, which is beautiful. You know, that's what you want with your food. You want stuff that, that you enjoy eating. I always tell my kids, forgot to get my garlic ready. I always tell my kids, try it. You know, they don't have to eat it. I don't force them to eat the whole thing. Or, you know, we grew up in the 70s and 80s. We had to have the whole clean plate club thing and the, the existential guilt over not eating what was on our plate because of somebody starving somewhere else. Which, you know what? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to any kid, so don't use that. All right, I'm trying to peel my garlic real quick over here. All right, so let me show you what we have here. Of course, we have a cast iron skillet. And I gave it about, I don't know, not quite a tablespoon of olive oil. And <clears throat> feel free to use either a little more olive oil or to skip this part entirely. But because this is an old, old Appalachian deal, I'm using just a couple teaspoons of bacon drippings. I'm gonna let that sit there just like that so that the bacon drippings will melt off my spoon. And I'm gonna find my garlic press because it's never where I want it to be, which is the truth today too. Okay, so we've got this over medium high. No, nope, that's wrong, medium low. Why did I say medium high? I swear y'all, the past couple days, nothing has come out of my mouth the right way. And that's a problem because even on a good day, I have a hard time. So recently it's been even worse. Okay, so here we go. Two cloves of garlic. You hear it? That's nice. You want that. Two cloves of garlic and we're gonna go ahead and get all the good stuff out of the center of that garlic press. And then here, here's our goods, okay? So I have just over half of a white onion. That's going in here. And I cut it into wedges. So like this, I wanna keep it nice and big. And then I have about 10 ounces of okra. And all I did was I trimmed the top and the bottom and I cut it in half lengthwise. See those seeds? That's where the, some of the slime factor can happen is with those seeds. I swear, I, I would not touch anything with okra in it for decades. I remember sitting at the, at the dining room table <laughs> with both cheeks stuffed with okra, looking at my brother and my sister, both of whom were doing the exact same thing I was doing. And finally, one of us would say, can I excuse? And if you were the lucky one, you got to run to the bathroom and spit it out. And if you weren't lucky, <laughs> Uh, all you had was the choice. You could swallow it or spit it in your napkin. And Daddy almost always caught us if we spit it in our napkin. Of course, Daddy wasn't 
Daddy was the kind of guy who would take us downstairs. Mom wanted somebody to spank us. Daddy would take us downstairs and whack the bed and offer us five bucks. Okay, so that got about two teaspoons of kosher salt. And I hear Brian trying to sneak in the front door and let anybody know it. Brian's out with a bobcat messing around in the backyard trying to get us a spot where we can put the greenhouse up. I see you. All right, so right over here where you can't see, I've got a mirror that looks at my front door. So even when I'm standing at the stove, as deaf as I am, I can look at that mirror and I can tell who's coming in. And right now it's Brian. He's standing there grinning like a Cheshire cat, which makes me think he hit something he wasn't supposed to hit with a bobcat. <laughs> All right, guys, so we've got our garlic, we've got our onion, we've got our okra right in this skillet, and we gave it a sprinkle of salt and a little black pepper. And this is all we're going to do to it. We're going to let this go for about 10 minutes, okay? Want our onion to get nice and tender, our okra to get nice and tender. And behind me, I've diced up about a cup and a half of our homegrown tomatoes. So you'll want to do the same thing. Well, you need sword off. I'm not going to talk about you. All right, Brian's telling me about a hummingbird that was on his deck. All right, so you see what we're doing here? Let's see. There's a good one. See this guy right here? Are we focusing? Let me... I can't see. I can't see underneath. Anyway, what I'm trying to show you is all that golden brown. See that? You want to pick up a lot of that. And I will say that cut okra, the cut side of the okra, is going to brown up beautifully. All right, and our onions have gotten nice and soft. And they are starting to get translucent. So here we come in with the tomatoes. So about a cup and a half. Now, I grow, um, what have we got, Brian? We've got uh, San Marzano tomatoes out here. We don't particularly love raw tomatoes. I cook with them all the time, though, so that's what I've planted. Well, Amish paste tomatoes and San Marzano's. A few cherry tomatoes for salads. But look how beautiful this is becoming. See that? That's exactly what you want. All right, now you want to let this go for about five or six minutes. You don't want to overcook everything, but you do want those flavors to come together. And you want your tomatoes to soften up a good bit and release their juices and start to caramelize. All right, here we go. Only just a few minutes and our tomatoes have cooked down, but they haven't absolutely collapsed completely, which is exactly what you want, okay? Now, secret ingredient, haha. -ha. This is kind of funny. Appalachian folks have been doing this for centuries, and the rest of the world only found out a couple years ago. A tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, right over the top, and that, y'all, is ready to go. Now, this batch is ready. Off the heat. Find a bite. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that's perfect. Love it. That, y'all. That's how you make it. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for watching.